Welcome to New Awakenings with the Edgar Casey's ARE. We're your hosts, Karen and Will, and together we are going to embark upon a beautiful journey of discovery through some incredible conversations that should pique your interest and might just change your life. Our guest today is a lifelong artist and designer with a degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. She spent most of her career as an accomplished abstract painter where she's balanced the functions of text and image in her artwork. And there have always been two sides to her, the creative art side that lives and breathes art and a deep compassionate side with a strong connection to spirit. And not only can she connect with spirit, but she can actually envision our souls. Mm. And she combines this ability with her award-winning artistic talent to create beautiful paintings of the souls of the people that she reads. And we are very, very fortunate to have her here with us today. Welcome to the show, Nicole Hart. Thank you both so much. I'm grateful. We are but, very grateful that you're here. Uh, souls of animals and humans, anything, any, actually it's energy, not even sentient, sentient beings, but uh, just energy. That's right. Because I'm painting solar systems and I'm doing, well, I'm doing some wolves right now, finishing them up, but, um, but it can be any energy of a tree, right. uh, just energy in general, since we're all energy. That's a great distinction. Oh. I'm glad you made, you made that, uh, yeah. yeah, pointed that out for us. So, but let's take it a step back for a second. Um, you are people at home can see your artwork here on set. You are an amazing artist. There's no no doubt about that, right? What drew you to painting in the first place? I've always always, um, been into mark making. Um, When I was a kid, I just would wake up with my crayons and start, you know, drawing on the walls. My mom was very supportive. Oh, she loves that, right? (laughs) Oh, yeah. She was very supportive, even though we rent. I I don't know if that that house, one place we did rent. But um, she would just move the bed when it would be too much mark making and move the bed. And then when all sides were done, we had to paint. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I that or she... Mr. Clean Eraser. Yeah. Oh, and I don't know. I don't think they were around. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure my age. But um, um, and then I uh, she got me a paint set of paint by numbers. I mean, any anybody who remembers that mm-hmm. knows how great they they smelled. <laughs> and uh, I um, I may I may have forgotten how they smell because I think I burnt out the. The, the cells, the brain cells. Oh, my God. Yeah. Just, I don't know what that smell was. I'm sure know, toxic, man. but still, they were delicious. <laughs> um, and I had a, a, a beret, like a French beret and a, and a palette, and she got me an easel. And I, you know, uh, I think part of it is like faking it till you make it. But um, I just felt, I felt um, like an artist. I mm-hmm. just felt like I came out of the womb to, to create and make. And so uh, I was painting at an early age, right. as well as loving animals and in their face and getting bit, you know, just, you know, just all in their face with no kind of boundary. No, I did get, I did get, um, yeah, I, I was bitten by a, a terrier, even those terriers. Uh, but yeah, I was petting them while, uh, and my mom, no, and the thing is my mom's like, oh, you know how to pet a dog. You all never pet them while they're eating. But anyway, yeah, I was just within to try to kiss them all up while I was yeah. eating. And he's like, Dip. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I lo- would love to see that soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, he didn't mean it. That's he was just like, painting. get away. I'm like, I don't yeah. want your resources. <laughs> yeah. It's been once. It was by a corgi. And oddly enough, I keep getting fed on Facebook like the corgi club, whatever. I'm like, the one dog that I'm not going to join that group. <laughs> Ruined it for all I'm corgis. Forever. Right? Yeah. Forever. <laughs> but I'm sure there's some good ones, too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So you started painting at a young age. When did you know you were psychic? Like, when did you feel that ability, that connection to spirit? I feel like I want to answer that, but then I want to go back to the other. Sorry, nonlinear audience. Hey. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the when did I feel psychic. I think they two are hand in hand. Like right now, um, well, not now, but my calling, my destiny is to communicate with animals, mm-hmm. somehow make the world a better place for uh, living it, for animals uh, and for humans too. So it's all about healing and uh, energy for animals and energy with the painting and healing. Mm -hmm. So um, I've always been intuitive. Mm -hmm. Um, We all are. We all come into this world um, intuitive, whether we um, push it back or deny it or whatever, but we we all are. And if you practice that and harness that, it's like any muscle. If you, um, you know, uh, work that muscle, um, then, you know, you can become better at it. So uh, um, the painting, though, I... um, I was always in art classes, and you know, you have to decide in school about if you're creative. I mean, it's a problem with people who are creative, right? You do I music, or and then most most people who are creative have good hand eye coordination. So, okay, you're good at sports, and then you're good at music or an, or an instrument, and then art, and you have to decide. And that's probably what's wrong with schools. You know, they don't have more of the creative outlets. But um, so then, um, you know, I was then I took classes in school. And I'm going to a great art school and uh, just kept going with that. So, and you got to keep going. It's like every day you just have to show up 
inspiration is um, for amateurs. You just have to show up every day and just hope that something really great out, you know, just, you know, education and all that. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, so my my psychic abilities, I, I really decided to harness five years ago, yeah. um, taking classes, mentorship. And I'm still working with Shira Dillard right now, but um, uh, because I'm definitely psychic, but not all psychics, medi- all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. Mm-hmm. So I don't put that be- um, behind my name, but I want to. So I'm working more on uh, communicating with the other side, which I can definitely do that with animals, but more so I want to do it with humans, Right. Um, which actually, great segue, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these are um, uh, uh, heaven uh, spirits, um, spaciousness. So that's what these two are, and ho- hopefully you get the the calming resonance from from these. But no the, doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Just at first glance, it, it, it is. They're very soothing. They're very interpretations relaxing. Interpretations of yeah. spirit, yeah. spirit. And okay, so take us to that day when which you day? are sitting there painting, and all of a sudden you go, "Good God, this is a soul!" Good God, man! Yeah. <laughs> well, how did you know that you're painting souls when you um, uh, came out with these? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have short answers. But so we, so, we prefer long answers because uh, uh, well, we, we can rest while you talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I've always painted abstractly with the schooling, and it's more they teach you uh, traditional academia to be linear, and I was never linear, which is interesting when you talk about being you know, outside the box. Well, if you're born outside the box, then where's the box? You know, then what do you do? Like right. the box, where is the box? But anyway, so, no um, so I'm non-linear. I learned that in the matrix. Climb over it. Yeah. There is no spoon, but there's certainly <laughs> you no just box build a new one. Right, There's no box. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, and, and I always painted, I've always, my work's always been about the environment and um, very, C, you know, you know, working for my CV and very thesis oriented, um, but it's always been driven intuitively. So it just never kind of really, never really worked out that way. I mean, I would have shows and, um, but then um, I, I would always come, come back to the intuitive painting, the loose painting, painting about feeling. Um, and, um, well, you know, my mom had dementia and, uh, about two years ago, uh, you know, I'm still painting, but then the dementia, her dementia allowed me to see, um, a greater part of myself and a greater part of herself. Uh, it just, uh, released the veil and any kind of, um, uh, ego that she had and she became the pure love and light that she came into the world as. And I saw that and I, w- I got to experience that. And that just opened me wide up to the psychic work and to the, um, the soul painting. And so I painted, my, um, I painted her heaven, which is on the cover of the book, um, so that she could just have, because we tried to talk about um, heaven and what happens when our physical bodies are no longer here. And with the dementia, just so I painted that so she could kind of just kind of get lost in it. And then I did a mom and me, which is her soul and my soul. And after that, uh, they just kind of started slowly. Then I was like, oh, this is, this is so my mom and me. And then my spouse's mother and father had passed and I painted her and her mother. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, and I would, you know, I, I had to work it out with spirit. I'm like, these are starting to come pretty fast. We have to work out a plan. And I was working on a 20 by 20 board, Baroque board. And I was working three at a time and they started coming really fast. And it was just, um, I really, this is what I'm, this is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to do. And um, every, and it resonated with, it's not like I just said, said, oh, that's what they, but everyone who I painted for it resonated. Mm -hmm. And they were like this, they could, yes, I connect. This is, and so since my life's all about healing, it was healing for me. It was healing for um, the people uh, experiencing the painting. And, um, you know, and then there's just talk like, how do I interpret a soul painting? So kind of working on a workbook now, but it is about sitting with it. And um, how fast are the strokes? How how much area of color is there? How slow? How fast? Um, what colors are next to each other? There's like a whole kind of like journaling thing process you can do to to help us feel because we don't slow down. We're we're not as present as we should be. And uh, animals make us present. There's Zen masters in the painting, especially abstract painting, bottom up instead of top down thinking can make us more present and does make us more present. And hopefully you feel connected to the uh, pure spirit of love and light that you came in and you still have um, from the painting. When you're painting, so we, we've talked to people who are channelers, and they say when they're channeling, they just kind of step aside, get into the back seat, and let the spirit or whoever yeah. drive. Right. 
Does that happen? Is that what happens to you when you're painting? I do feel like I'm the vehicle yeah. in the translation from soul to canvas. Mm -hmm. What's ironic is I lived in Atlanta years ago and I was painting and, you know, partying. Um, but painting and um, that's that state that statement came out one day. I was just, um, you know, a little uh, it was a little um, uh, fortuitous. Right. Um, but that translation in the soul from soul to canvas. And it's um, now I can use it because I really feel like it's it's valid. It's everything I've done up until this moment that that is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but it, I think we do. Um, I don't know if I don't know about labels. I'm not, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I just know I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Like I know I'm psychic or, mm -hmm. or intuitive. I'll tell you. You're and channeling it when you paint. I'm sorry. So I'm getting the downloads. You're channeling while you paint. I mean, that's okay. Exactly so I'm channeling, doing. and um, you know, the poems are interesting, right? Because before I came, I started reading some, and I was telling Will, like I, you know, I don't remember. I'm sorry, I get teary eyed sometimes listening to them because I don't remember writing them. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I've tried to record the information I'm getting while I'm painting or write it, and I do write them in the. So there's writing underneath the painting for sure, and I do to write it. But then when I paint over, you can't see it. So it's like, well, how do I capture all that I'm getting? Because I am getting downloads, right? Mm -hmm. You actually painted Karen's soul without even Beautiful soul. seeing a, a gorgeous soul. Human. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But you painted her soul without actually knowing her at all. It's best when I don't know them, really. So then how does that pure. happen? Right? How, how do you connect with someone? That that's the psychic work I did years ago. Five, You know, the training that I did that everything is like, you know, everything is. It's really funny. Spirit's telling me, like, I've been asking, like, when's this going to, you know, I know it's going to get bigger, right? And Spirit's mm -hmm. always like, well, I've always had an issue with patience. And what this everything has taught me is to slow down. But it's interesting because it's like um, every you see all these, like, little blips of your life, right? Whether you ignore them or not, you'll you'll see something that happens to you or mm -hmm. this or that. And I go, should I go that way? But you go this way or should I veer, you know, and all these little signs. So I saw all those signs. Um, that were coming, that were building up to this. And so you just got to put in the work. And I did. Um, and I forgot your question, Will. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to act like we're just still talking. Absolutely. No, this is exactly what I want to ask you. Answer the question uh, perfectly. Okay. Just how you, how you tap into someone without knowing them to paint their it's, soul. It, it's like when I communicate with an animal um, or, or a human. Um, it's, it's good to have the energy there. I think it's probably the best. Mm -hmm. But um, I do like not knowing because it's um, it's just pure, like, um, just what are you energy? What are you getting? Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, the less, you know, I always say in animal communication, the better that way I'm not swayed in any mm -hmm. way. Um, and I think I knew you just the right amount for this, mm -hmm. you know, because I saw you, I felt your energy. I felt the energy between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I could still feel it. You know, I could, so I, you know, the, like the different roles you play, I just can feel it. Mm -hmm. So I think it was perfect. And, and it's usually interesting right after I meet someone, it's kind of a, sh Am I supposed to paint their soul or not? And it, there is a, a, an extent or a, a, a important time of like, are they ready? Mm -hmm. So I think I misjudged a couple people like I painted, but I, I'm keeping it for the collection that's going to travel, that hopefully is going to be in another show, travel soon. But um, I just felt I needed to paint your soul. I just, I just felt it. Well, I love so, it. I knew he didn't want one. Um, you know, or, or if he does later, no, I, you know, my, my I don't know. But... My, my soul's too dark. Oh, you, <laughs> you say that. You don't want to see my soul. That actually leads me to a question. Have yeah. you ever painted a soul that you just you wanted to stop mid-painting uh, or been like, well, I got to back away? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know if we want to get into, like, I've never met any, like, fucking paths, whatever. But um, so, <laughs> no, uh, no. And most, most, I mean, uh, I haven't met that, that dark. I, I don't believe in that kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, there is evil out there. We know it, but um, no, I have not. And everybody, how they, I wish everyone who I'm painting, um, the animals see their love, animals see the brightness in them. Mm -hmm. They know it. Mm -hmm. They share it with us every day. But we, um, because of all the things that happen to us in life, we don't see the, the beautiful gifts, the love and the light that we're, that is just radiating from us mm -hmm. that I get to see when I paint someone's soul. So. It, it is interesting. It's made me um, just so much. Well, my mom made me oh, with the dementia. I just was like everything I was before has had changed. And I became so much more compassionate. And I'm not where I want to be. But I mean, it's always work, right? We're always yeah. a work in progress. But, um, but but getting to see like everybody's true essence makes me lighten up on myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not the critic anymore. Like we were talking about before. It's like, who cares what we, we look like on camera? You know, every, you know. No, well, we, no, we're, we need to do. talking about that at all. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, we, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's about the message, but, though. Yeah, it is. It, it's about it, the no, message. It, it really is. Like, um, if everybody could see themselves, 
and just colors, lines, and shapes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just if we could see each other that way, yeah. we would, there would be no prejudice. We're just glowing balls of light moving around when, yeah. with what a physical body. What a gift. I what a know, gift right. to be able to look inside someone. Thank you and for that gift. It, yeah. And Who, whoever, yeah. <laughs> and, and the fact that it started with your mom, right? The, that, that, it, She's you're, amazing. You're able to connect with her essence to, to, to get, peel aside all the, the issues, the health issues, the dimensions, the whole thing, kind of thing, and get right back to the essence and connect with her on that level. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing with your paintings, right? You're connecting. And when we went to your show, which you have here in oh downtown North, uh, and we saw Amazing. all the different soul paintings out there. You, we, we fe you felt like you were connecting with people at such a deep level that it, it's, it's one of those things you walk in and you immediately feel the energy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. You, thank you. Um, you know, it's weird. I've always, always felt like when I was in, in my, um, around my paintings that I never painted them, always felt that way. Mm. I've never felt like, oh, that's mine. And I'm, you know, arrogant, whatever. I may be confident, but not the arrogance. Oh, actually, it's mine. It's good. But um, when I walked into, and I still feel like I need to be there quietly, mm -hmm. um, I think that's the beauty of museums, right? Yeah. But um, uh, so there's reasons there, to be there with all the people that were on the souls were on the walls, mm -hmm. but also to be there in, in quiet and kind of that's how I need to, a lot of people need to take it in that way. But um, I do, I felt like the, the space was like vibrating. It I, totally was. I, it was. I, I did. Oh my gosh. I, I did. Yeah. You know, and, and Karen, you asked me a question. I'm just going to answer that question. Um, at the show, you asked me about uh, images that are vertical, um, mm -hmm. that have more vertical elements than mm -hmm. organic. Um, and it is just a direct connection to the divine. And it is just people who, you know, have that vertical ascension. And whether you choose to use it or not, I just did a diptych painting, which means two. So they, 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 they present as one, but they could, they command their own space and could be hung uh, separately. But to get, but they're together. Uh, and this person had a lot of uh, the cur the organic, but the ascension too. And white is that white is the divine. And mm -hmm. you know, I think tarot cards, you know, with the yeah. color sometimes. But yeah, right. so and that is momentum. And yeah, I could do a reading right now, Karen. I know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baby, read me. Uh, <laughs> well, well, we are we are getting close on time, so I wanted to make sure we talk about the the book because I, I just got to call out the name Colors of Consciousness. It's like the perfect, perfect name for this type of book and the cool thing is you have the paintings in the book but you also wrote poems from cer for certain ones that you've uh, done and you did do karen's uh painting you, you wrote a poem for. actually every painting comes with every painting the channeled yeah. poem um which is uh spirit communicating um in word um what the images maybe can't about your gifts and um, talents that you bring into this world. And it's just really just a, it, I, I, it's just a huge, this is a visual reminder. Like you are, just, you're insightful. You're amazing. You're, you, you can connect to the divine. Um, you know, you, your, your energy is fast, you know, mm -hmm. just all these things that, um, but it's in word form too. So uh, the, the words are nice to kind of as a little Sure. Uh, segue into the painting. So, would you be but, open to ha reading one of the poems? For or, or you could, or, yeah. Or, or, or uh, I there's could. one that's beautiful. Can I? I don't want to say one thing. Yes, we haven't. Um, that my mom. Um, you know, I'm gonna say it without crying, but um, she she did give this to me. Her yeah. her courage during the dementia it was so healing, and she continues to heal. And um, she was a New York girl, so she loved art. You know, going and raised in, in uh, Manhattan, East 81st in New York, and going to museums and um, the science museum and the art museums and the library when she was young, taking the cross down bus, you know, when she was just little. So she always admired um, and was appreciative of art. So she was totally supportive in me going to, um, to VCU. I got a um, full ride to William and Mary um, and was paid for, but I didn't want to major in business. And um, uh, my mom's like, we'll find a way. You know, we didn't have a lot of money, but my uncle was willing to pay if I went to William and Mary. Yeah. She's like, no, if that's not what you want to do. So I can only be nothing but grateful to her for, you know, everything. I feel like it's, you know, I guess I'm part of it, but she's the other half of it. It's too many anyway, um, yeah, do you, do, you want, uh, do, you, do you want to read Heaven or? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I'd be happy to. I mean, yeah. you don't have to. I can, I can. I mean, it's up to you, whatever you prefer. Yeah, I might cry. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the title. Okay. So the title is Heaven Spaciousness. Interpretation of One Aspect of Heaven, 2020 Oil on Board.
Hello, dear soul. Focus on the clarity of light within you. Allow that light to fill the open spaces in your heart. Look for the blue of divinity to wrap its loving arm. Though it never left, your soul is home. Peek behind the clouds. You will find us there, mingling about, awaiting your conversation. Head to toe chills. I read that and I was like, oh my God. Like that is, I don't remember writing it and I just, I'm just a vehicle. But thank you. That was beautiful. I was like, thank you, spirit, whoever, you know, Mm -hmm. the collective spirit, what the, you know, just proves that there's so much more. It is gorgeous. Absolutely. We're so much more than our physical form. Yeah, it was beautiful. And you you were afraid that you were going to cry when you read it. I have no attachment to this poem and I had a hard time not crying. So oh, well, you're so good at that. You're like an actor or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, uh, oh my gosh, uh, the time has flown by as it always does whenever time we great. talk to you. But uh, if someone wanted to reach out to you, whether it's to commission a painting or to get in touch with you to learn more about this kind of thing, what's the best way for someone? Uh, probably my website. It's um, Harp, H-A-R-P, which is my last name. Harp Space, like Headspace, but Harp Space. Um, dot org and my um i have a full like art website as well but either either one and that's nicoleharp.com okay so but we'll, we'll definitely uh you will have seen that on the lower thirds on the screen just now and if you are just listening to the show don't worry you can go to edgarcasey.org and go to the episode page you will see those links directly laid into the show notes and if you don't think you have you know wall space for some art this, this book is amazing so you can <laughs> Enjoy her art through the book. Yeah, absolutely. Nicole, thank we you love so you. And yeah. we thank you so much for coming uh, again. <laughs> it's been an honor. I really uh, And really we hope to um, stay in touch very, very closely moving forward. Yeah, we will because I, I will make it happen. I, I'm perfect. just, I'm, I'm someone who's always perfect, you know. Sounds yeah, excellent. Keep in touch. Well, thank well, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of New Awakenings with Edgar Casey's ARE. Sadly, we have come to the end of this one. But if you miss this one or any, of the others, you can always find us at edgarkc.org. All the episodes are directly laid in there for you anytime you want to access. <laughs> Once again, thank you for, so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on New Awakenings with Edgar Casey's ARE.